Hello friends, followers and channel members and welcome to another video here with me in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and today we're talking about the recently released world update number four. This covers France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg and um, well it seems to have had some mixed reviews straight away. Now, for those of you that watched my live stream on the day that it was released, you will have seen me attempting to land quite badly in uh, at Charles de Gaulle in, uh, in Paris, one of the uh, new updated regions, and it was impossible. The simulator turned uh, into a slideshow. Now, I don't have the greatest PC in the world, as I have a Ryzen 5 3600, a uh, GTX 1660, and only 16 megabytes of, uh, sorry, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I also have a normal hard drive. It's not uh, not an SSD. So really is a, a mid-range computer. However, a lot of people have also said, even on top-end computers, that they have also been uh, suffering with a loss of frame rates since the update and not just in uh, France and the Benelux regions that have been updated they've uh, been experiencing something very very similar uh, all over the world so how have I gone from what happened in the stream which was about three frames per second um, to this here we are at, uh, at Charles de Gaulle and whilst it is certainly not perfect I'm sure you'll all agree that it is more than uh, capable in terms of, uh, of flying. I could quite happily fly uh, around uh, around Paris and into Charles de Gaulle if the, uh, if the frame rates were like this. And I can tell you I have, I have indeed. And it's been absolutely fine. We've had no issues whatsoever. So let's have a look at what I actually did in order to, uh, to achieve this. And as you can see, as I'm panning around, that's where you notice those frame rates uh, buffering a little bit, if you like, uh, and struggling. Uh, if you're just moving forward or left, right, I'm obviously using the drone cam at the moment, and you can see that actually it's not that bad. So the first thing I did is in my, I went to the content manager in my profile in the simulator uh, this morning when firing it up and I updated all of the packages that were out of date. Now I don't have things like uh, the Japan world update in there just because I, I very rarely fly in that area. Um, so even though you may not have things like the Ch Japan update or the American update, there are still some small packages which are available which you really should go ahead and download. And they are kilobytes or megabytes. Oh, and they're very, very small. They literally take a few seconds each. Go ahead and download them. And a lot of them contain optimized data, even optimized buildings which just look better and render uh, a lot quicker and faster. They're all small. I had nine to do this morning. So go ahead do that it'll take you less than 10 minutes and um, that's uh, that's number one ticked off the next thing I did was I made sure that all my video drivers for my graphics card were up to date so a quick look on uh, GeForce experience for uh, for those of you with uh, Nvidia cards uh, make sure you've got the latest GeForce uh, game ready driver up to uh, up to date and working so again that was something else that I uh, updated this morning the next thing then is uh, is quite a biggie, particularly for me, and that is the rolling cache. Now I know a lot of you don't use rolling cache. Well, every time we have an update from Zobo and uh, Microsoft, you must update your rolling cache. Um, you need to empty it, and then it will re-download again. Now I set aside two gigabytes of data for my rolling cache and I know what you're thinking I'm sure you're thinking that is absolutely loads well as I stream a lot here on Microsoft Flight Simulator then it really does need it um, and the reason you've got to update is because you're storing files that may no longer be compatible with the uh, simulator since the update. Uh, so you need to get rid of those and then it will re-download them. As you can imagine, re-downloading 200 gigabytes is a heck of a lot. So I uh, normally set that to be done overnight. And that's the best way I can uh, best way I can think of doing that. So 200 gigabytes, you may not want to have that much, but realistically for me, it seems to have worked. What it now means 
is that all of this scenery here in Paris, a lot of it has been stored on uh, on the hard drive, and as you can see, the frame rates are, uh, are coping far far better than they did in uh, in the live stream 24 hours ago when I did that. And uh, yeah, I I just store so much 200 gigabytes set that aside because I stream with the uh, with the flight simulator. I want to try and have the I would ju I just want to try and relieve that internet bandwidth uh, as much as possible, and uh, it seems to be working. So the other thing then I will uh, go ahead and do is have a look how much, how many files have you got in your community folder. Now a lot of you that fly on VATSIM I know you want every livery going just to make model matching working and I agree it's, it's great when it does but I usually only fly around Europe so I'll pick maybe 15 or 20 of the most popular airlines that fly around Europe and that's all I will have in my community unity folder. So if you've got things like the Project Mega Pack, which has got uh, hundreds of liveries I believe it is now isn't it, if you've got that then they're things that can obviously slow the, uh, slow the simulator down and if we have a look in my community folder you can see here this is it. I've got uh, a few of the most common, uh, common liveries and then we've obviously got the fly-by-wire A320, uh, Neo NX, etc. Um, but that's it. Uh, occasionally, of course, if I know I'm flying to or from a specific uh, airport that's, uh, that I've got a mod for, I will, uh, I'll pop that in there as well. But other than that, I try and keep, try and keep that as, uh, as clear as possible. So the next thing then that you'll want to do to try and get your frame rates back after this update is some of you, myself included, are going to have to tailor your settings. Now, we all want to run on Ultra, uh, but as the simulator is becoming more and more detailed, it's proving it's, it's just not possible anymore. So, I went in this morning and I had a good look at what I'd got set, and I thought, you know what, I, I can probably do without the, uh, the trees on high. I mean, I, I'm flying now at 5,000 feet. Those trees look pretty fine to me. Um, what about the blades of grass? Well, yeah, if you're bush flying, fair enough. And it's all to do with the different types of flying that you're doing. As I'm flying airliners, the, uh, the, the, the quality of the bushes, the grass, and trees really don't make that much difference to me. Um, I want the buildings to still look uh, quite decent. Uh, but for me, it's probably more about the clouds. They're, they're more important. So if I just uh, stop this flight, we'll just I'll show you my settings and then you can obviously uh, play around with yours. So let me just have a quick look, go into the settings here. And I know a lot of you sometimes ask me to show these on uh, on streams as well. Uh, but there we go. So as you can see, we've got the V-Sync off. Um, and Ren Scaling is just set to 100. And then if I just come down. Uh, so the terrain vector details. So where we've got uh, oceans, lakes, roads, rivers. Uh, want that on Ultra because I, I think that's quite important whether you're actually flying uh, uh, jetliners or whether you're flying GA flights. I think that's quite important uh, to make the scenery look, uh, look decent. Uh, buildings on high. To be fair, I could probably turn it down to medium. There's not too much difference between medium and high, so that's another trade-off I could potentially make. Uh, and as I say, trees and grasses, uh, bushes, etc., we, we can just leave those on uh, medium. Object level of detail, if you're struggling, of course, you can reduce that a little bit. There's my volumetric clouds. And then everything else, you can uh, pause the video here and uh, check these against your own settings, of course. Um, but yeah, I'd really even on low settings many people say just how good the simulator looks on low settings so don't be scared to roll those back you don't have to fly everything uh, everything on ultra so if we just go uh, go back and uh, oh no don't want to go there let's hit resume so there we are. We're now flying over uh, over Paris, having departed uh, Charles de Gaulle, and it's a completely different world, isn't it, to what we had in the uh, the live stream that I did uh, that I did on the day of the release. The other thing that could potentially have caused that, of course, is that on the day of the release, guess where everybody was flying? Everyone was also connecting to the servers to make the update, and all this information, of course was needing to be downloaded by myself and thousands of others all at the same time and this information also wasn't stored in my rolling cache well 
for now it is and as you can see it looks like we may actually be able to fly over uh, over France and uh, land at Charles de Gaulle once again. I uh, sort of put that on my blacked out list after uh, after yesterday. But thankfully, due to these modifications, it looks like we can uh, come back and uh, enjoy flying in uh, in Paris, which is good. One of the uh, one of the cities I like to come and land in. So just to recap very quickly those five steps. Number one, update all the packages in your contact manager. Make sure your video drivers are up to date. Rolling cache, you must delete that after you've done an update uh, if you use it. And if you don't use it, I can certainly recommend it. It does help as we have proved in this video. Uh, remove things that you don't use or need drastically in your community folder. And finally, of course, tailor your settings to make sure that you're getting the best settings for the type of flying that you are doing. I'm going to let this video play out now, but uh, that's uh, that's all I need to say, really. What I would also like to hear is uh, from you, the viewers, leave any questions you've got uh, down in the comments below or anything else you found which really does help uh, get your frame rates back after this update. The other thing, of course, is you'll have noticed on the ground at Charles de Gaulle, I had static airplanes on there. Well, they didn't seem to be causing much of an issue. Uh, you can obviously remove those if uh, they're not needed. I normally don't have those turned on when I'm flying uh, on VATSIM anyway, because they're not required. Um, but as you can see, just for the sake of this video, that worked quite nicely. So let me know how you're getting on with the new update in the comments, guys. I'll see you in the next stream. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please also do consider hitting that uh, subscribe button and turning on the notifications bell for uh, information and obviously notifications of uh, new content and uh, when we have our live streams. Thanks for watching. I'm going to leave you uh, with the final views of, uh, of Paris. Bye bye for now.